Ladies and gentlemen, welcome and thank you for joining today's web conference, ASF Communication and Messaging Webinar. Please note that all lines will be muted until the Q&A portion of the call. We'll provide you with instructions on how to ask a verbal question at that time. You are welcome to submit written questions during the presentation and these will be addressed during Q&A. To submit a written question, use the chat panel on the right-hand side of your screen. Choose all panelists from the Send To drop-down menu. Please indicate which presenter your question is directed to. If you require technical assistance, send a note to the event producer or call our help desk at 888-796-6118. With that, I'll turn the call over to Liz Fernandez. Liz, please go ahead. Good morning, everyone. I'm Liz Fernandez with the Professional Development Services Branch, and I would also like to welcome you to today's webinar. Uh, we have four speakers today, and starting us off will be Ed Curlett. Ed started his career at USDA in July of 1992, working in the Public Affairs Office of the Animal and Plant Health Inspection Service, commonly known as APHIS. Over the years, Ed has supported APHIS programs involving emergency response to plant or animal pests and diseases, biotechnology, wildlife damage management, and international trade. Ed has served as the Director of APHIS Public Affairs since January of 2003. Our next speaker will be Heather Overton. Heather is the Assistant Director of Public Affairs for the North Carolina Department of Agriculture and Consumer Services. With more than 10 years of state service, Heather has assisted with communications pertaining to animal diseases and natural disasters. After that, we have Cindy Cunningham, who is the Assistant Vice President of Communications for the National Pork Board. She is responsible for issues and crisis management in addition to media relations. Cindy spends a great deal of her time working with the pork industry on tabletop drills focused on African swine fever and foreign animal diseases. And our last speaker will be Roy B. Lindsay. Roy Lee is the Executive Director of the Oklahoma Pork Council, a position he has held for the past 20 years. OK Pork is the producer association in Oklahoma affiliated with the National Pork Board and the National Pork Producers Council. He has been a participant in state, regional, and national African swine fever and foot and mouth disease exercises and discussions representing Oklahoma's pork producers. I will now turn the webinar over to Ed. Thank you. Uh, this is Ed Curlett with uh, APHIS Public Affairs. And if we could advance the slide deck, a slide or two. Great. Uh, can you advance one more, please? OK, thank you. So we've approached uh, ASF communications the way many of our partners have. We've focused on raising awareness and preparing for a detection. With this in mind, we've identified target audiences and approaches to our communications. Uh, next slide, please. First, I'll discuss uh, raising awareness. So we started these efforts last fall, and since then we've been working with various partners, including the pork industry, other federal agencies, states, and the Canadian government to discuss needs, messaging, and products. As we learn more about ASF, we've asked ourselves whether there are things we could do or information we could share that could help prevent this disease from entering the U.S. We then worked to identify our target audiences. We focused on three main audiences, producers, veterinarians, and international travelers. We then began identifying messages and materials that would reach those groups. Next slide, please. So we've issued a series of press releases the first one was last October, and it covered our initial preparedness efforts. We also created a fact sheet with some basic information. Although the furlough in January delayed our ongoing efforts a bit, we have continued to produce information, and we've launched a lot of information and materials this month. This includes four new announcements, 
two of them aimed specifically at the different audiences we've identified. Uh, next uh, slide, please. So along with the announcements, we recorded three videos, one by USDA Secretary Sonny Perdue, one by the Undersecretary for MRP, uh, Greg Ibaugh, and one by our Chief Veterinarian, Dr. Jack Shear. We have targeted stakeholders in various media outlets with these videos so far. Next slide, please. So the last major part of the recent suite of materials we announced is a series of infographics containing information for the various audiences. We started by focusing on four main topics, risk pathways, biosecurity, signs and symptoms, and international travelers. These are available now on our website. <clears throat> Excuse me, go to www.aphis.usda.gov. ASF is one of the top spotlights right on our homepage. As our information on ASF continues to evolve, and as we identify new audiences, we plan to create new infographics. We're already looking at one on feral swine, and we'll continue to talk to our partners and subject matter experts to make sure our awareness campaign is providing the right information at the right time. Next slide, please. So moving to the second part of our communications efforts, we know it is critical to be prepared for a case here in the U.S. APHIS has many folks prepared, that is preparing for ASF on the operational side. So part of our job is to stay abreast of those preparations here in public affairs. And part of our job is to share information about those preparations as necessary. We've also started a draft communication plan. We, we call them rollout plans. So this plan has basically has the communications efforts that would be needed to announce the first case in the U.S. should it happen. We're happy to share that plan with others. However, it's important to note that it is an evolving plan. And now that we've launched our main awareness materials this week, we'll focus more on updating that plan and making it more robust. We are also planning for other materials such as B-roll and photos. These things would be requested in the event of a detection here. And we continue to stay in contact with our partners. Uh, next slide, please. So what still needs to be done? As I mentioned, we'll continue updating our resources and refining our messages and materials. But the most important thing will be to stay in touch with our partners. As communicators, we all know the critical importance of message consistency. So we welcome these conversations now. We are more than happy to share anything we have, and we're more than happy to receive feedback on our materials and messages. Likewise, we welcome our partners sharing their materials and information with us. It helps us know what's out there so we aren't recreating the wheel. So we look forward to continuing this conversation with all of you. And with that, uh, that concludes my, my, uh, my remarks. So thank you. Yes, hi, this is Heather Everton. I'm with the North Carolina Department of Agriculture and Consumer Services. Um, I was just going to update on some of the stuff that we've done in advance uh, for African swine fever messaging and communications. Um, we are still in the early stages of planning, and uh, we're using our past experiences uh, with animal disease outbreaks, namely high path avian influenza, and some of our hurricane experience to, uh, to help with this planning. Next slide. So one of the first things that uh, we've done as a state is the creation of a working group. Uh, the communications and public relations working group is co-chaired by uh, the Department of Agriculture as well as the North Carolina Port Council. And it also includes representatives from industry and, um, and other state government representatives. It is one of five working subcommittee groups. Uh, the other four are, are 
business continuity, response, surveillance, and mass mortality. Uh, all the subcommittees include members of industry, uh, the North Carolina Port Council, uh, North Carolina Department of Agriculture Vet and Emergency Program staff, and where appropriate, uh, North Carolina Farm Bureau, uh, university representatives, and the North Carolina Division of Environmental Quality representatives. Next slide. So we have met uh, well, our first meeting. Uh, this was our agenda. It was to identify our audiences, uh, identify the top three communication needs for each of the audiences, and identify the best communication method, methods. Um, we, uh, we also we plan to hold more meetings and, and start developing materials. Next slide. Uh, some of our goals include uh, providing consistent messaging. That includes uh, the safety of the pork supply and make sure that this messaging is consistent at the state, federal, and industry level. And then also develop targeted messaging for special groups. Uh, these include small slaughter facilities, uh, vet offices, uh, pot -belly pigs were mentioned, uh, transitional or backyard farmers, and then also show pigs. Next slide. We also spent some time talking about challenges. Uh, I think as a group that we feel that maybe some of the larger pork companies are greater prepared and more aware of African swine fever. The challenges will lie in the ways to reach uh, the transitional or backyard population. Uh, some of the methods that we discussed is to reach out to NC Choices and NC Cooperative Extension uh, to become members of our communication groups. We discussed maybe a newsletter uh, to be sent to these, uh, the backyard and transitional uh, farmers, uh, to communicate through our meat and poultry inspection division. Uh, in North Carolina, you register as meat handlers, and we have more than a 1,000, uh, and we have talked to the division director of this group to see if that was a possibility. Uh, another challenge is when do we begin communicating? Uh, probably the answer is now, uh, and we're looking at ways. Um, and then also, and this was a big one, is the lessons that we've learned from uh, High Path AI response planning. Uh, this was back in 2015 for us. Um, next slide. And uh, as we geared up for the possibility of High Path AI coming to the state, part of the preparedness was creating a website, uh, suspending poultry sales and shows, including poultry exhibits at fairs. And we also created a, a backyard chicken registration with hopes that we could help us locate and get out information to the backyard chicken owners that North Carolina has. Well, this did not go over well. Uh, backyard chicken owners made Facebook groups. There were articles in newspapers. There was angry emails to the departments and uh, the shirt, uh, which kind of says it all. The consensus of some of the backyard chicken owners is that we were coming for their birds which of course was not true. We were just looking for a way to communicate with them. Uh, we, and we are taking these lessons that we've learned from this into our planning for African swine fever. Uh, next slide. Communicating to the public is another area we discussed. Uh, I think that general public awareness of African swine fever as a threat in the United States is, is maybe still pretty low. Uh, would creating a website or releasing information raise concern? Uh, what, is the, what is the correct timing? Uh, the next points, uh, items that we need to figure out um, is if threats to the United States does increase. Um, we talked about developing a website. Uh, if it does come here, we need to figure out our social media response. Uh, we've learned some lessons from our recent Hurricane Florence responses that if there is an emergency here, we need more assistance to help respond to social media and to uh, have people searching social media. Uh, you know, part of the thing that we discussed is maybe looking at our other state departments, the USDA, or maybe our state emergency operations to help us monitor social media. Um, we want to make sure that the North Carolina Port Council is integrated into our Ag Emergency Response Center to assist with the industry response, as well as have a, a good series of talking points developed to share with all responders, responders at all levels. 
And then the other thing that we want to look at as a group is development of, of bone trees, you know, with producers, backyard farmers, and others. And that's all we have. Um, that's the last slide. Good morning. This is Cindy Cunningham with the National Pork Board. Uh, welcome to all of you on the call today. I wanted to take just a few minutes and talk about what the pork industry is working on as it relates to African swine fever. Um, and the next slide talks about the pork industry's crisis plan. And this is a very important set of information to understand. As an industry, there are several organizations that represent different producer groups and different segments within our industry. But many years ago, we agreed that uh, through our pork industry crisis plan, we would work with a unified response plan in the event of a crisis or an extreme uh, issue type situation. You can see the organizations listed there, the National Pork Board, the National Pork Producers Council, the Swine Health Information Center, and the American Association of Swine Veterinarians, along with our state pork associations, all working together uh, on, in this case, on African swine fever. The next slide that we see talks about the, the two response plans that we have in place. And then within each of those response plans, there are, are two segments as well. So kind of the where we are today, the before or the prior to, um, to ASF being confirmed in the United States. And then the second plan is for once it is, um, assuming if and when, confirmed in the U.S. And our response plans uh, are laid out to ensure uh, and, and assist our producers um, in the situation that we're in today, first of all, protecting the U.S. swine herd, what can be done today, and then what do they need to, uh, where to go for information. And then from a consumer standpoint, ensuring our consumer confidence in pork um, and building a baseline today and then having those tools at the ready. And then we would switch to the second the, after it's confirmed, if it is confirmed in the U.S., again, focusing on what producers need to protect the U.S. swine herd and their personal herds, and then consumer confidence. We know that ensuring confidence in pork and our food supply is very critical, and a challenge like uh, African swine fever that would garner a lot of media attention could have some consumer confidence issues. The next slide talks about some research that we conducted in the fall, the Baseline Consumer Awareness Study. And I'm really going to spend the majority of my time talking about consumer awareness and consumer questions and um, tools that we have in place to help ensure that consumer confidence if and when we should get it here in the U.S. What we tested was um, understanding what the situation is today, and this was late last fall, and then we also, after we got through that portion of the, of the research, we tested uh, what consumers' response would be after we laid out several different scenarios and gave them lots of information about ASF. So it is important to understand that research showed us today the awareness by consumers of ASF is low and that additionally, as you would expect, if their awareness is low, their knowledge is also low about ASF today. The concerning part, it was after we worked with them to understand and to educate them about ASF with some um, tools that they may see in the media, some mock-ups, that kind of thing, um, the concerns were great about whether they would continue to eat pork and what their actions and reactions would be um, if we were to get ASF here in the U.S. So that provided for us the opportunity to actually test the messages that we have in place um, and to build those reassuring messages and really tweak our messages to make sure that it's not just the message that we think is good, but they are tested messages through thorough research. Uh, and as Ed Curlett talked about with APHIS, partnering on these tools is really important and partnering on things like our messages is really important. For those of you who may not be aware, um, all the producer communications that we do through the National Pork Board, because we are a checkoff, has to be approved through USDA. So that gives us an opportunity um, for APHIS's messages and the industry's messages to coordinate and to really align 
that collaboration is so critical in the event that we would be sharing that, those messages and that information. And really what we try to do is to, um, to highlight the reason on the consumer side of messaging why pork and the public are safe from ASF. Next slide, please. So our primary messages, and for those of you who, are, who were around during H1N1 will recall the pork is safe message uh, also played well during that time period. And uh, that's where we lead our, into our messages with African swine fever is that pork is safe to eat. We need to make sure that first off, consumers understand pork is safe to eat. In all of our tools, in all of our spokespeople, um, you'll see that message and, and as you did through uh, USDA APHIS's um, uh, infographics and things that they released this week, that pork is safe message uh, was highlighted throughout. Then we talk about African swine fever and it's abbreviated here for the sake of the slide. Is highly is a highly infectious viral disease impacting only pigs, not people. And then the the third important bullet there is USDA does not allow the importation of swine or pork products from countries or regions positive with ASF. Very important also to understand. Our talking points have um, support bullets under each one of these primary bullets, which gets into everything from um, pets because our research also showed that. Uh, that the consumer is most concerned about themselves, then they, the second concern that they have is about their family and the safety of their family, and the third concern that they have is about the safety of their pets. And then after that, as long as they can get information, uh, they, they may not be as focused as they once were. So the next slide shows us uh, just a couple of the, the points that we have put together. So we, we built a very large and very um, commanding campaign. So it's the digital campaign, so it's both Facebook uh, as well as digital ads, digital banner ads. And you'll see throughout these ads, I'm gonna spend some time on this slide to show you um, the, the way we built these ads and then we'll bounce through a couple more versions of these ads. I'm not showing you all of the ads or the entire campaign simply for the sake of time. But you can see on there, um, we, we quote the USDA um, as pork is safe to eat. Um, these ads appear, they're Facebook ads and they'll appear one directly after the other. So African swine fever affects pigs, not people. Um, then below the ad, there's a link where to go to get more information um, on, on ASF and what it means to consumers. We also do have a, uh, pork producer and pigs in there for a very specific reason, and we want to show um, confidence with that pork producer that he is caring for his pigs uh, and that he's, he's doing the right thing and that he's not fearful of this situation because we don't want to add any more fear um, to the, the situation itself. The next slide is a version of the banner ads um, that we have. Again, same producer, same concept with the, with the confident look. Um, the, the wording there, African swine fever only affects pigs. ASF cannot be transmitted to people. U.S. pork is safe to eat. And these will pop up um, one right after the other as banner ads do. And then it always would get the facts. The research showed us above everything else, we need to make sure that we are, be, that we have a place prepared that consumers can go and get information that they are competent in. So we are quoting USDA, we are quoting CDC, we are quoting APHIS um, in that confidence. The next slide shows us another round of our banner ads. These um, don't have a producer in them, but they have more uh, stringent wording. African swine fever cannot affect people. The USDA reported that ASF is not a public health concern. U.S. pork is safe to eat, get the fat. And these three slides that I showed with the ads are just a representation of the entire ad campaign that we have put together. It is a very large campaign and we will be um, launching it um, as soon as, as ASF is, is confirmed in the U.S., assuming that we are at uh, a certain level of triggers within our plan. Uh, because we don't want to create any more concern, but we also want to make sure that we are out the gate right away so that consumers can be confident in our, confident in our product. 
The next slide talks about a matrix of tools, um, both paid as well as earned. And these are just a few of the tools that we have, again, on the consumer side of our information. We know that we need these tools in English and Spanish, and the majority of our tools are in both English and Spanish. Very critical for us. The research shows that the Spanish-speaking audience in the U.S. Um, has greater concern over the safety of their pork in the, situ in, in the event of an ASF outbreak. So we want to make sure that everything that we have is in both English and Spanish. We are doing a tremendous amount of media monitoring and working with media um, through our monitoring reports. Um, regularly we are correcting situations. We had two this week um, that we reached out to and asked them to correct. Um, uh, one was CNBC in Asia, and then we had another national media that were using the wrong terminology as it relates to African swine fever. They were calling it swine flu, so we were able to reach out and get both of those corrected. Our consumer page that we have for ASF right now is, is not, um, it's not massive. It just has just the facts, if you will, for right now and we have more tools in line to populate it should we get to that point. Again, we're trying not to, to stir the pot, but we want to definitely be prepared. You could see through our advertising campaign the importance of the digital um, social aspects. Uh, we have videos in place that we continue to create. You can see one of our videos highlighted there with our public health veterinarian, um, just a basic explanation of African swine fever. We also have videos with um, with a medical doctor talking about on a very calming level that people cannot get sick from ASF. The video that follows that, that steps up and elevates beyond that um, one notch is with the, um, the public health veterinarian for the state of Iowa. And she takes it into a little bit deeper amount of, of science why you can't get African swine fever. And then the third in that series is um, with Dan Rock from the University of Illinois, a pathobiologist who goes deep into the science of why humans cannot contract the African swine fever virus. Um, our third-party spokespeople stable this, this, for this issue is about 25 deep, and we have everything from veterinarians to virologists to, um, to consumers. We are working with a a very popular um, chef that is very popular to the Hispanic community to get uh, uh, use him as a spokesperson. So within all of our audiences, we've tried to target who would be spokespeople and press them on ASF and have them ready to roll should we need them for the media or other um, other areas. And then critically, the collaboration within agriculture is is of the utmost importance. Our allied partners have been great to work with, and we're great to work with during H1N1, um, and uh, we hope to have their support, and it appears that we do so in this situation. Um, there's nothing stronger than the agricultural community in a crisis. The next slide I, is about our producer communication. So I wanted to, I was asked to touch about our consumer communications, but I felt that it was very important that we talked about our producer communications as well. Uh, Mike King on our team is creating a bulletin. Uh, now it's going out once a month, and it's a foreign animal disease preparedness bulletin, and it's available on pork.org backslash FAD. If you are not getting this bulletin, let us know at the pork board, and we will get you on the, the email distribution list for this bulletin. But all of our producer tools, producer communications tools are available on that pork.org backslash FAD. Our producers need to know what they need to be doing today to protect their herds and prepare, and then also um, the information that they will need should we get uh, ASF confirmed here in the United States. So again, spending more time on consumer information at the request of, of the organizers of this event, but um, know that, that our producers also appreciate any information that they can get, and we would commend the APHIS folks for the information that they sent out this week um, to producers and to other audiences as well. That partnership and the relationship that we share, not only among the four organizations that I mentioned, the National Pork Board, NPPC, SHIC, and the American Association of Swine Veterinarians, but also with APHIS, 
is critical to managing any kind of a, of a issue, but especially a situation that will be at a crisis level such as ASF uh, in, in the, if it were to be confirmed in the U.S. herd. Next slide, please. And that's really the, the remarks that I wanted to share with you today. Roy Lee Lindsay with the Oklahoma Port Council is our next speaker. Roy Lee. Thank you, Cindy. Um, my name is Roy Lee Lindsay. I'm the Executive Director with the Oklahoma Port Council. Uh, we are a state port producer association representing uh, everything from the largest uh, port producers in the country that, that have operations here in Oklahoma all the way down to our 4-H and FFA show pig exhibitors. So we have a, a broad range of contacts across the state, um, and that's really kind of the role that a state association can play in times of crisis. Uh, next slide, please. What I thought we might share with you today is, is a, there are some things that I think uh, state associations can do to be an asset in times of crisis communication. Um, first of all, Communication with our membership, our producers, is going to be vital in any uh, FAD response. Um, state associations like Oklahoma have contacts with our members. We have contacts with the major producers in our state. We have contacts um, with uh, we have contacts within the show pig population, within commercial population, things that you may not have that we can help you. Uh, reach out to producers to share vital information with them. Uh, in terms of preparedness and planning, uh, we can be a resource to help you reach out in advance to talk to who are the veterinarians. Um, Oklahoma's pork industry is uh, very contemporary, very modern, if you will. Um, we have some uh, larger integrators that work with contract growers, that work with smaller farmers, and a network of veterinarians. There's about 15 of them that work together regularly. And so we can pull those veterinarians together to talk about what are the plans on their farms, should they see something, what are they going to do, how are they going to do it, and how do we share that back with uh, the State Department of Agriculture, how do we share that back with uh, USDA officials. Um, and I, I may have missed this, and I've got a link down here on the bottom uh, to the list of all the state pork producer associations. But every major pork producing state has uh, a, a pork association, if you will, a uh, producer association. Uh, 23 of us are full-time state execs or full-time staff for those state associations. There's another, I think, 21 state or regional associations out there. Um, and so if you don't know who those people are in your state, that link at the bottom of the page will help you uh, identify who they are in your state or in, in your region. Um, one of the other things that, that we've done here is we can be a representative for the industry. You get media inquiries, uh, hey, I want to talk to a pork producer, I want to talk to somebody from within the industry. We can help you set that up. We can help you organize those things. We also can work, um, we work to share messages from USDA and from the state veterinarians back out to our members and to other agricultural organizations. Um, if we were to get a, if we were to have a foreign animal disease break in Oklahoma that, that uh, African swine fever, for example, the other ag groups in Oklahoma are going to turn to me for information. They're going to ask me what can they do to help? How can they help share uh, resources? And so we can be that connection between you and other groups on the outside that can help us share our message, whether it's the consumer messages Cindy was talking about, whether it's it's more internal producer-related messages. Next slide, please. Uh, one of the things that we've been working on uh, in advance, and this more specific to Oklahoma, I think Heather talked about this some in what they're doing in North Carolina with the North Carolina Port Council, but and it's probably happening all across the country, uh, at least we hope so. Uh, part of our role is to help build a relationship between the state veterinarian, our, our USDA vets in this area, and our producers, whether those be show pigs, whether those be commercial producers, transitional producers, whatever it may be. And so we've been very active in, in participating in the tabletop exercises that have gone on here uh, in the last month and are planned for the next 
six months, eight months out. Uh, we actually have an exercise coming up we're going to do here uh, exclusively for transitional and show pig producers. Um, we've already had done several workshops and several uh, conferences, if you will, with uh, veterinarians and producers on a commercial scale. Uh, and we recognize one of the challenges we're going to have, and, and, and Heather talked about this in her presentation, is how do you reach those folks that only have two pigs or only have two sows or whatever it may be. And so we're going to have, we've got that session coming up in the next 30 days as well for us to pull together and talk to some of those folks. How do we build that plan? Um, and we're working with the state vet to facilitate some of that uh, conference. And then I think all of your states or all of your state associations would be willing to be a resource to you to assist with uh, any of your preparedness planning exercises. So if you've got an exercise coming up, you're trying to figure out who to invite, you're trying to figure out where to host it, whatever those pieces are, I would encourage you to reach out to your state association and allow them to help you with that. I think most would be very willing to do so. Uh, next slide, please. Um, in case of an outbreak, uh, at least in Oklahoma, this is kind of what our plan looks like. Uh, one is to be a conduit between the, the state vet, USDA and our commercial and transitional swine producers. Um, if uh, our expectation is our state vet will be up to his ears and alligators and won't have time to get out and talk to everybody that needs to go, but it's easy for him to relay message to me or his folks to relay message to me and let me disseminate that out through the industry. Um, that's a place where we can kind of maybe take that off of his plate and free up his time to, to focus on other things. In Oklahoma, uh, the Oklahoma Port Council, myself in particular, have been designated as our media response person, our spokesperson on behalf of the industry. And so that gives, we've already have all that established with uh, our Department of Agriculture. And if uh, they get a media request for somebody to speak on behalf of the industry, they already have that as written into their plan to refer all those requests to me. Um, I will make myself available wherever and however that needs to be. Um, many times media is going to want to go to a farm or they're going to want to talk to an actual farmer. Uh, in Oklahoma, that's probably not going to happen. Uh, they're going to refer those things to me. But in many other states, other associations deal with those differently, and they may have a, an individual pork producer already identified who would be happy to sit down and visit with, with media. Don't know about farm visits or any of those things, but certainly uh, – we can help coordinate that communication to the media from within the industry. And then we also have, have been working with ODA, or with our Department of Ag, the Oklahoma Department of Ag, on uh, what those media releases should look like. Uh, are they including my name and contact information? Do we have input? And this is a place where Cindy and her team are very helpful as well, because I can take those and, and share with her and make sure we're incorporating the messages that she was just talking about, this is a pig specific, doesn't affect humans, pork is safe to eat, et cetera. Uh, next slide. I think that's it. Okay, we do have a written question in the queue, um, and it's for Cindy. Um, it says, a great set of consumer tools is there also a set of pre-planned producer messages ready to go in the event we get the disease? That's a great question, and thanks, Jamie Eggers, for asking that question. Uh, there is very much a set of information available to our producers um, about African swine fever. Current information, again, I would refer you back to the pork.org website, pork.org backslash FAD website with all the information for consumers, or I'm sorry, for producers on that site. Um, and then, you know, it's, it's really important for us as the industry not to take the lead in communicating, but being supportive of what's happening with the, with the APHIS information as well as with our state information. So we do have, um, have lots of tools available for our producers uh, helping them to and what to do on their farm, and uh, we will be following the lead of, of the um, state and federal government based on what happens in the situation. But there are, are a tremendous amount of tools, and we would be happy to share those with you. 
So there's another question that I think was uh, directed to Cindy. It's where's, where does the six TIG reporting phone number on the infographics ring to? That actually is a question for Ed Perlet. That was part of the infographics that were released okay. this week. Yeah, I believe that rings into the the state uh, where the number is is coming from. The, the state uh, uh, that would be the the area of vet, veterinarian in charge. I think is what we're calling them now. So basically, the vet services office in the state uh, from where the call is being made. Okay. Um, there is a question about. Um, whether or not the United States has stopped importing pork casings from China. Can anybody talk about that? You know, that's something I should probably know off the top of my head. Um, but but, I'm, but rather than take a, a guess, uh, I, can, I can get back. I can assure you that anything coming from China is meeting certain requirements uh, so that ASF's risk is minimized. So. Okay. Um, they asked if the information set can be sent to all state veterinarians and to participants on this webinar. So I think I'm, I think what they're saying is, um, can we share this um, slide deck with everyone? I mean, I can send it out as a PDF. That's, that's fine by by me. So. Yeah, we would encourage that. Yep. Okay. I will take care of that. So if the people that have signed on and were able to put their emails in, I'll take care of sending the PDF out to you guys. Do we have any verbal questions in the queue? Ladies and gentlemen, as we enter verbal Q&A, please feel free to place yourself in the question queue by pressing pound two on your telephone keypad. You will hear a notification when your line is unmuted. At that time, please then state your name and question. As a reminder to submit a written question, use the chat panel on the right-hand side of your screen. Choose all panelists from the send to drop-down menu. Please remember to indicate which presenter your question is directed to. And there are currently no questions in the queue. Okay. I have no written questions either. This is Cindy. I would just like to add one thing, and this kind of goes back to the question of sending out the information to the state veterinarians. As an industry, ASF is something that could completely devastate us. We all know that. Everybody on the call knows that. And the ability to collaborate and to work together and to provide tools and assistance to each other and, and especially to our producers during this time is so critical. If you have needs or ideas or suggestions on tools or anything else that we can do to assist you uh, as you deal with ASF and as we deal with ASF, please let us know now so that we can start to build those tools and make sure that we have the best uh, the best plan in place to assist our industry. Thank you. Thanks, Cindy. We do have another written question. Um, it says, I've received questions about pet treats originating from China. Were they deemed safe, sent to the U.S. before the outbreak in China? So this is Ed. Um, pet treats? Uh, probably um, fall under a couple of federal agencies, and I can tell you that if they were being allowed in from China, then yes, they were deemed safe. If they're coming in from anywhere, they're deemed safe. So um, obviously the, the regulatory agencies involved constantly monitor the situation around the world for various pests and diseases. and 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 uh, if something something needs to change as far as our import uh, regulations, uh, it, it changes. So but that's about as specific as I can get. But uh, not now. It sounds like we have a 
a pet treat question to look into and uh, some uh, casings questions. So we'll do that. Yeah, and Ed, if you can um, if you can get me those answers to those questions, I can also include that in the email I'll send out. Sure, absolutely. Okay. And we have a verbal question in the queue. Corey, your line is unmuted. You may ask your question. Yes, uh, this is Dr. Robert Cobb. I'm a state veterinarian in Georgia. And uh, I appreciate this call. I think this is a very large concern. Um, especially uh, something that, that's relative to my neck of the woods, and my the southeastern part of our country is feral swine. They're very much a part of Europe's uh, issues with African swine fever, and if this ever does come to our country and gets into our feral swine population, we're, we're going to be in a big hurt. Um, there are a couple of things that I'd like to somebody to address. I don't know uh, who's proper individual to ask these questions, but one is uh, we have a little bit of miscommunication going on between international imports coming into our country and then moving from the international port into a state. Um, uh, that's an area that needs to be worked upon because the communication between uh, USDA and the state uh, regulatory agencies are not uh, always uh, as we would like it to be. Uh, the next question is, um, and uh, the next question is that, uh, uh, are we doing any testing of these confiscated pork products at our ports? Do we know whether or not uh, there is African swine fever virus present in any of these materials that are being smuggled in that we have found. And that's all, and I appreciate your your uh, call, and I appreciate the opportunity to make comment. Thank you. Now, this is, uh, this is Ed again. Uh, we've actually received that question regarding um, C's product about whether we're, we're testing it or not. And we were looking into that yesterday. I don't know if any of the VS folks on the line could answer that, but at, at a minimum, we'll add that to the, the answers that we'll provide Liz to go out in an email um, uh, regarding uh, testing of this product that's seized at the ports. I do have another written question. It says, in regards to pets, is there messaging for people who own pot belly pigs? Yes, this is Cindy, and we actually just updated our messages in the last uh, last two weeks to answer that question about pets because the research showed us that pets are so important. And we, so what you saw on the slide are just the key bullets. Under each one of those bullets on the talking points, and, and Liz, I'd, I'd be happy to share these talking points with you so that you can incorporate them uh, in the email that you send out to the participants so that everybody has a set of talking points. But in the, the primary message, pork is safe, African swine fever is not in the United States, U.S. pigs are not affected by the African swine fever outbreak in other countries to date. The second bullet under that, it talks about pets and it says ASF is a disease of pigs only and therefore is not a threat to non-swine pets or other livestock. We talked about it being a threat, not a threat to pets in general, and we just changed that in the last two weeks um, to non-swine pets. Uh, pot belly pets, or I'm sorry, pot belly pigs and micro pigs um, are uh, susceptible to ASF. Now, I'll add that in the Secretary's video, he, he does mention um, uh, pot belly pigs by name as something folks should, uh, uh, owners of those animals should be aware of, of the disease and be familiar with the signs and symptoms. So. Okay, I do have a comment from someone within uh, with the swine group that says, to my knowledge, we are not currently testing seized product as this could have trade implications and the product is being destroyed. So that's something we can look into. Um, 
I've also been asked if the information from the Port Council can also be sent electronically to the state veterinarians and others on the call. I'll take care of that. As long as people put their emails in when they signed on, I can go ahead and send all this information electronically. Do we have any other questions? Oh, here's one. How many pigs have died from ASF so far, and what percent of all the pigs in China? Do you know that? Um, this is Ed. Um, I don't know that offhand, but yeah. there may be some reports that we can get our hands on that we can provide some information uh, regarding the situation in China. Okay. One thing that I would direct you to, again, is the FAD bulletin um, that the, the four organizations of the industry um, are putting out, and that is on pork.org backslash FAD. It includes a map of the regions of China and the, um, the amount of infection in that country. One of the challenges we have is, is having accurate information. Um, so the information that we are putting out is as accurate as uh, we can confirm. Okay, well that would be very helpful. Are there any other verbal questions in the queue? There are currently no verbal questions in the queue, but as a reminder, ladies and gentlemen, if you would like to ask a verbal question, please remember to press pound two on your telephone keypad. Okay. If there's no other questions, um, I would like to thank our four speakers today. I thought this was very, very interesting. Um, and also remind everybody on the call that this webinar has been recorded and will be on um, the USDA website in the training and exercise plan. Um, we have a video gallery there that you can go to and you can view any of the webinars that we've done in the past year and a half. Um, and now I have another question. So I'll stop my spiel here and say, in addition to the potential trade implications, products aren't tested because everything is treated as if it as if it has a foreign animal disease. Regardless of the product, even fruit, it is individually sealed, then moved off-site and incinerated. Since everything is treated as if it has disease already, it would not be a good use of resource to test products that would be destroyed anyway. So, that's a great comment. And there are no questions in the queue. Okay, so I would, like I said, I'd like to, you know, remind everybody this is recorded. People can see this recording. Um, I will work on getting the information out to everyone. Um, and I'd also like to, you know, thank again the speakers for their um, the, uh, cooperation to, you know, have this webinar. I really appreciate that. Um, and I'd also like to let everybody know we have another webinar scheduled on Thursday, April 4th at 11 o'clock Eastern Standard Time, and the topic is Incident Complexity Analysis. And the information for this webinar and other additional webinars, because the calendar is filling up, um, will be sent out um, within the next week or so. So thanks again for joining us, and um, have a great rest of your day. Thank you so much. That concludes our conference. Thank you for using AT&T Event Conferencing Enhanced. You may now disconnect.